there are processes humanity have gone through and we are still going through i don't know which stage you find yourself in but humanity went through the first process of formation you can write it down formation and god took the dust of the ground and formed man and then that was a dispensation after we were formed up then we moved to the next thing deformation man was formed into an original being into the very place that god wanted man to be but over time man was deformed as a result of disobedience and we all follow sin that is why the bible says that in sin did our mother conceive us by one man's disobedience death reigned so one man was formed everybody else was to be formed in alignment with that man but that man was deformed over time and everyone that came on earth was also deformed everything about you was corrupted this is not who you are your wisdom is deeper than this your blessings are greater than this the realities of the glory of God upon your life is higher than what you are experiencing right now. Whatever you are going through right now, it should be higher than that. But you went through a process of deformation. Man could name everything, tap into the mind of God and name everything that God created. That was the level that we have to get to. Man that was planned that he will live forever started falling sick. Then the years of man were now determined from 960 then it came down to 120 came down to 70 and then down to 33 and in our age now down to 10 years we still have 10 year olds dying and then god helped us jeremiah 2 21 let me show you a scripture there yet i have planted thee what a noble vine holy a rice seed i formed in other words i formed you well i planted a whole seed it is a rice seed you were made to flourish you were made to be blessed you were made to have dominion you were made not to have weaknesses you were made to be strong i planted a rice seed how then art thou turned into the degenerate plants of a strange vine what happened to you I planted an obedient seed i planted a precious seed when jesus was going he said of a, a parable of how some, a, a good man planted a good seed and then somebody else came to plant tears god knows the kind of seed he planted you are not god's original plan he's sure of what he planted it was a perfect seed god is sure but a deformation happened but thank god there's a solution to the deformation I, am i here with the church at all thank god he said i'm sure of the seed i planted it's a seed of righteousness it's a seed of purity it's a seed of prosperity it's a seed that shouldn't beg it's a seed that shouldn't control to the operations of hell it's a seed i planted in my likeness and in my image but something has happened to it a deformation and then the moment deformation happened then god brought another system called the reformation regeneration god brought it read the scriptures for me first peter chapter 1 verse number 18 for as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible seeds as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your father somebody say i was not redeemed with corruptible things verse 19 but with the precious blood of christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot somebody say i'm bought with the blood this is where reformation begins you were deformed and out of your deformity he came out to redeem you and the bible says that what he redeemed you with is not money it's not silver it's not gold it is the blood Christ Jesus I'm confident about it you don't need money to be reformed you don't need a good background to be reformed I don't care whichever deformation you are going through right now many of you have been deformed to a level of masturbation of addictions of drinking of smoking all kinds of things you have been deformed to a level but hear me there is a system for our reformation 
it doesn't come with an amount it's not in dollars it's not in pounds it's not in cities it's in the blood that has been shed for you freely somebody said i'm reformed by the blood of jesus somebody said it again i'm reformed by the blood of jesus verse 20 who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world but was manifest in these last times for you verse 21 I would want you to read this loud and clear who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God hallelujah mm, verse 22 seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto an unfeigned love of the brethren see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently verse 23 this is the secret of your reformation one to go being born again not of corruptible seed but of the incorruptible seed by the word of god which liveth and abideth forever somebody say i'm born again, I'm born again. somebody said i'm born again by what the incorruptible seed of the word of god and what is that word of god the blood that was shed for your remission and your reformation deep within i believe it i used i was formed i was deformed but by the word of his sacrificial blood i have been reformed if a man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All oh, things are past away. My deformation is past. I'm teaching you the place of maturity. You need this to experience it. If you don't accept the place of your reformation, it can't happen for you. As in reality, it is by this revelation you start confronting your weaknesses and your deformities. You start confronting them you don't confront them by strength you confront them by revelation i'm too reformed to go back to my old ways i'm too reformed to be counted among the victims of my family background and their cases i'm too reformed for that i'm too reformed to be controlled by a witch in my deformity spirits were controlling my life by but in my reformity I control spirits. Is somebody here with me at all? I am too reformed to be in the captivity of hell. Too reformed for that. This is the process of our maturity. You can't go to the place of maturity without this understanding. You can't. The Bible speaks of the regeneration of the water of the word. This speaks of the regeneration of the water of the word and the renewing of the spirit. You need to understand this. There is a whole regeneration that happened to you. I so much believe and believe and believe and believe that if a man gets born again, even your kidneys and your liver and your heart becomes born again. I believe it. I believe in my reformation. I am the eighth creation of God. After the sixth day, he formed man that was deformed. Then on the seventh day he rested and then he rested for many years and came back and on the cross two things came out blood and water from his ribs and formed a people called the church we are the reformed of his creation you need to understand somebody say i am not what i used to be don't allow anybody to address you by your past in the past you used to be weak mentally but now you are reformed you are reformed accept it accept it yes it is your spirit that got born again but by that revelation even your flesh can also benefit then after reformation then he takes you to the next step called transformation you can be reformed and yet not transformed reformation is in the babyhood stage you were born again and born again as a baby but it is transformation that shifts you from babyhood to childhood then to adulthood be not conformed to this world but be you transformed 
by the renewing of your mind so every single day you work on that mind of yours you keep working until your realities begins to conform to that reformation that has happened to your spirit it is in transformation we see that even your flesh becomes a partaker of what your spirit has received your business becomes a partaker your lifestyle becomes a partaker your family becomes a partaker because you are being transformed by the realities of your spirit titus chapter 3 verse 3 to 8 for we ourselves also were sometimes somebody shouted well for we ourselves uh -huh. come on let's repeat that part no don't bring the foolish bring just the first part for we ourselves also were for we ourselves also were for the last time for we ourselves also were for we ourselves also were sometimes that means he's talking about his past but now that's where transformation begins when you can separate your past from your now when you can acknowledge what you used to be from what you are now this is where transformation is for we ourselves also were sometimes foolish disobedient deceived that means no more serving diverse lusts but no more and pleasures but no more living in malice but now no more living in envy but now no more hateful but now no more and hating one another but now no more we ourselves were so when we talk of disobedience yes i've played a role there but not now when we talk of envy yes i used to be but not now when you can separate your present realities from your past if you are still confused about your past and there is no separation you have not started the transformation journey it is when you can know your present realities of what god has done and is doing in your life transformation verse 4 but after that the kindness and love of god our savior toward man appeared after that when we after so we know we know the separation we know when our reformation began we know when our reformation began and now we have seen a transformation when god appeared when the savior appeared we now know not by works of righteousness which we have done but according to the mercy he saved us by the washing of what oh come on come on by the washing of what that means regeneration comes with washing did any time you declare that i'm born again the reality of being born again the reality of being regenerated the reality of your rebirth is that it came with a washing so anybody that claims that i'm born again then he has been washed from everything he used to be the washing of regeneration my god so apostle paul will say i used to be disobedient but now i'm not because i know the reality of the washing of regeneration i know it i know it i know it i know it if you don't accept this you'll still be in church and mess up if you don't know this i know it it's at the center of my heart it's at the center of my heart washing of regeneration boy so when we tell you that when you are born again you are going to heaven you are going to heaven listen you don't need to tell me you don't need to tell me that i should still preach that you can be in church and go to hell no there is a washing with people's regeneration they must know my job is not to tell you that you are going to hell my job is to let you understand what comes the package that comes with your regeneration there's a washing in it this is why the prophets of old the bible said they looked into it they looked into our salvation and the bible says that god gave them that it was not for them but for those who should come and the bible says that with salvation the holy spirit has been sent down and angels are looking up into it we don't understand it there is a worship that happens when you become born again we must see it unfortunately we sing with it but we don't want to accept it all kinds of songs that suggest that i am no more what i used to be but you are still there 
because you can sing but if your heart does not accept it you will see it there's a regeneration i can't be a born again child of god so struggling with things i used to struggle when i was in the world Listen, it's true. You can be. You can be. Because you don't have understanding. So you can be. But after the light has come, you should sit back and tell yourself, where is my worship? Where have I been washed from? Where did I start the journey of my life? And where have I been washed from? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Then he didn't finish there. He said, and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. Renewing so your regeneration washes you and the holy spirit has the part to come and renew you these are blessings you have in your salvation package heaven is not the only blessing of salvation heaven is not the only blessing of salvation grace mountain hear me heaven is not the only blessing of salvation the world must have a benefit of your salvation ghana must have it because you were saved bribery must stop before you enter heaven god will ask you how did the earth benefit from the salvation god will ask you that is why there will be a judgment seat and everybody will be rewarded according to his works not in heaven but on earth don't disappoint god with the salvation he has given you don't disappoint god last time i told I think I wrote something like that. Anybody who does not understand Isaiah 59 have not begun the Christian journey. You've got to understand why Jesus came to die. And if you understand Isaiah 59, you understand why Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 says, Arise and shine. The arise and shine is not just the way we use it to be. I will arise in life. I will arise in life. There is a meaning for the arise and shine. Go back to Isaiah 59. And you know the reason why Jesus, the Bible writes down that arise and shine for your light has come. Because there is darkness on the land and people must benefit from your salvation experience. He says that it comes with the renewing of the Holy Spirit. So you are not just washed when you become born again. You are given the Holy Spirit to consciously renew everything that you used to represent that made you a deformed human being the holy spirit begins to bring renewal to those things that made you so deformed in salvation we don't defend our weakness don't don't defend your weakness go by the system that god has placed and that system is a system of transformation that should work through your rebirth and through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He begins to renew. The Bible calls it the renewal of the Spirit. No wonder the Bible says that be not conformed to this world where you came from, but be it transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's the work of the Holy Spirit subjecting yourself to the ministry of the holy spirit so that the way you see things becomes different at first you used to think that tit for that is a good thing until you become born again then the holy spirit begins to renew your mind and then begins to tell you that it's not everything we respond to some things are best attended to with patience and with love and with understanding the holy spirit began to tell you why are there many churches on earth yet the ch the world keeps on getting deformed over time you see why because christians are only decorated we decorate people to showcase them like on sees match the way schools are students are decorated to come and march before the president most of the students can't even speak good english but on six march they are decorated nicely to come and march most of these students don't have what it takes to learn they don't have it they don't have they don't know how to even operate on pc they don't know anything they have not been educated but they have been decorated to show 
and impress that's what is happening to us today we are decorating our churches people so you see a man of god coming and several protocols ahead of a man of god the created people who can quote five scriptures the created people who don't understand sanctification they don't understand righteousness they don't understand anything about the kingdom they don't understand anything there are people <laughs> A man of God is a guest pastor is coming. We make t shirt of the, the guest pastor, put it on people who don't understand the mystery of honor. They, they have just been decorated to meet the man of God, but in reality, they don't even understand the mystery behind what they are doing. Decorated people, so many churches, but marriages are failing. So many churches, but our employers are being stolen by the very employees that go to church every morning. Sunday morning so many decorated people yet no impact on the society because we don't even understand so long as we can have something nice to show people and impress them we are fine for two years I have now been permitted by God to handle this subject for two years I was I was having a repeated vision that I shared with it with the church some time ago I was having re repeated visions of how I'll go and see a baby sometimes in a gutter and I'll pick up the baby and I'll be crying I'll go and meet a baby and the baby will be blind and I'll go and pick up the baby and I'll be crying and most of the dreams and the visions that were coming to me had to do with babies I'm picking them up and I'm crying and I'll wake up and I don't know what to do God am I not doing anything right the Bible said and Samuel that we call church workers head of departments administrators of church most of the people that are handling god's work don't know him jesus says unto you has been given to understand the mysteries of the kingdom that means this kingdom oppressed by mysteries people are in church they don't understand the mysteries of the kingdom they have not been given the mysteries of the kingdom yet they are serving god Kadidi Asata. the bible said and samuel ministered to the lord first samuel 3 samuel ministered to the lord by verse 6 and verse 7 the bible says but samuel did not know god that's our condition now many people ministering to god yet they don't know him that's why the bible says that for the foundation of the lord is sure for the lord know those that are his everybody say they know him but he knows those who know him beautiful singers but they don't even have a worship life themselves the only time they sing is when they stand on this pulpit this morning they just woke up well something and rushed here and came to sing to us and this has been the lifestyle for many years they created well so we can take picture of them then we there is a way that service can distract your proof and fellowship with God service service that is why between Martha and Mary Jesus chose Mary Martha you are worrying yourself for nothing leave the servant come and sit down and hear word every single time people ignore the word of God and fellowship over time they are the only ones that deviate I have a son of mine who is too busy with church work every single time I'm preaching he's not here he's either going to buy something or it's an error then I realized that over time only him started making consistent errors consistent errors to a point that I have to suspend him only him because the time that he has to sit down and understand God's system of transformation he's always busy and anybody that falls into the trap of the devil in not receiving God's word and working in it over time you'll be busy working for a God who will ask you that what have you been doing say I used to prophesy he said I don't know you I used to cast out devils he said I don't know you I used to be part of the ushers in Grace Mountain he said I don't know you sometimes your service to God can be an enemy to your worship to God many of us are not getting transformed most of the people that stand outside when service is going on have the worst of character they are not built up they are not changing 
they are not transforming because they have rejected the system of transformation and trying to work for God work for who you are rather bringing disgrace to God's kingdom you have some of you most of the sermons that comes weekly it has been accumulated on your phone you don't listen to them there is no future with God for an untransformed soul you have a future with God only in heaven that one day he will manage you so you die and go to heaven until you are transformed by the knowledge of God's word you don't have a future to manage I'm here to see anybody operating a God ordained ministry on earth operating a God ordained ministry that is blossoming that this that person's focus is not on the word of God I'm here to see one we need to understand God's word have time for it until you are being renewed as a church a church that has records of people breaking out of addictions breaking listen the bible says if a spirit goes you go and find seven more and come so the fact that you broke out of addiction doesn't mean that you will be free forever there must be a need of refilling there must be a need of building that is where we find ourselves now how many of us will be transformed quickly to help others also transform the bible says when i say time that we ought to be teachers we are still looking for who will feed us because transformation is lucky from today may god raise teachers in our time i said may god raise teachers in our time what is our place of confirmation that place is called jesus that's it sometimes we defend all kinds of things with the statement of paul imitate me but it didn't end there imitate me as i can i have both of you listen separate like that so you are you are the church he is christ but probably you were a baby so you have not been given the mysteries of the kingdom to understand him. but i am matured so i understand whatever he represents because sometimes jesus will not speak yet he is speaking you may not hear any audible voice from jesus yet he is speaking there are times that he will show up as a person there are times that he will show up as a wind there are times that he will show up as fire a baby can't interpret it but the matured can discern so what happens is that as complex as jesus is then this is what we are going to do i am going to follow him because i have the privilege of maturity i can discern him so i'm going to follow him so as i'm following so have you seen jesus used to be here now i'm here now i've shifted from where i used to be but you can take that place at the end of the day you have not taken my place you have taken jesus's place because that is where he used to stand that's where he used to be i am only following him and you are following me because i'm a man you can easily discern me but he's a spirit not all can discern him so the best thing you do is that you follow somebody you can discern but that person you don't follow the person because you can discern the person you follow the person because the person can discern jesus then you follow is somebody here with me at all so you don't just follow a man because it's the culture of the church so you are following no you follow because sometimes you can't interpret jesus well but a man can interpret him the man wakes up with an understanding from heaven yesterday night i was sitting here then the lord started i felt his presence enter this place then he started speaking to me then i could see that this thing i'm receiving is not normal stuff i started receiving so much that was not normal so i was just sitting here quickly i picked up i sent you people messages i said this is what jesus is saying i've received the divine wisdom 
this challenge in the church this is how we are going to handle it i've just received it left to them it may take six months for them to interpret it but i was positioned in a way that jesus could easily visit and give me that divine wisdom so the moment they pick up what i told them and they start doing it in reality they're obeying christ but they got it from somebody who was patient enough to stay in his presence and pick it up that is the essence of church loyalty it's the end of it is that this person know the road to christ so i'm following so you just don't follow because a person is your pastor you follow because there is someone you want to meet but the pastor is going a direction that can easily help you meet that one so you are following